Okay, uh, it's great and uh, to be here. So today, I'm going to talk about tensor and tensor decomposition, uh, which is a kind of algorithm to analyze heterogeneous biological data. <laughs> okay, uh, please let me introduce myself first. I graduated from Tokyo University of Science, and I developed some advanced packages of mesh enrichment analysis for non-model organisms there. I also created a meta-analysis package for ADN-SEC data. And after graduation, I worked for Liken until now. And at Liken, I've developed some single-cell analysis packages and tensor analysis packages. Today, I will talk about these packages later. Because I created uh, packages for hundreds of organisms, uh, including non-model, uh, I've got the third rank uh, when it comes to the highest number of biology packages uh, in the bioconductor maintenance. Uh, I'm also organizing a community called uh, BioPakason in Japan. And they are the core members uh, of BioPakason. Our goal is to increase uh, Bioshi package authors and to hold Bioshi Asia uh, 2021 in Japan. Uh, in the Pakason, we are holding a monthly meeting and create some teaching materials for Bioshi packaging and support the application for bioconductor contributions. <coughs> yeah, all right then, let's move on to the main subject of our discussion. First of all, I'll explain what heterogeneous biological data is. And biological systems have a very complicated structure like this figure. Uh, for example, uh, in the cell, DNA sequences are folded in several nucleus. Uh, RNA molecules are transcripted from the DNA. Proteins are translated from the RNAs. And finally, the proteins are related to several functions. And outside of the cell, uh, the, there are also many signals like bacterial infection, and adding chemical region, drug, lifestyle, and so on. <coughs> The change of these molecular types or phenomena finally causes a phenotype such as disease, uh, BMI, and morphology. It is not possible to measure all molecular types or phenomena simultaneously, so one or two of them are chosen and exhaustively measured. This approach is called omics study and widely used. Uh, for example, uh, Genomics measure the all DNA sequences and transcriptomics measure uh, all RNA molecules. Since these omics datasets are comprehensive measurements of uh, certain uh, biomolecules and uh, a certain space, it can be represented uh, as a matrix. For example, in the single cell analytic data, all gene expressions are measured in all cells. So let's say a type of biomolecule uh, is named A, and the uh, detected species is named B, respectively. In ER diagram, we will see entity A and entity B are connected. In most cases, each element of the matrix are considered as the strengths of association between A and B. Next, uh, let's say two types of biomolecules, A and C, were exhaustively detected from shared spaces, uh, B, uh, simultaneously. Uh, such kind of data is called notch omics. Uh, in ER diagram, we will see entity A and entity C are connected via shared space B. Uh, I once summarized such kind of biological data analysis in a review paper in uh, 2018. And remember that 
biological systems are all connected. That's why biological data is also connected with each other. As you can see, many previous biological data analysis tried to detect the association between two entities. Uh, for example, uh, <coughs> differential expression genes uh, can be considered the association between gene expression and phenotype. Uh, in this review, I suggested that such data analysis can be handled under common framework, and such a framework can connect the knowledge of researchers. Uh, if we combine heterogeneous biological data, the data analysis can be improved. This is based on an assumption called guilt by association, or GBA. In GBA, uh, if an unknown gene uh, and a well-known gene have a high similarity, uh, and if a well-known gene is related to a disease, an uh, unknown gene may uh, also be related to this disease. Uh, in this way, this, this assumption uh, construct uh, bypass between unlinked entities and can improve the accuracy of our, our analysis. Uh, with the development of experimental technologies, biological data are becoming more and more complicated. However, the issue is that it is not obvious how to represent and analyze such heterogeneous biological data. For example, uh, in single cell omics data, uh, annotation uh, to genes uh, as a omics data about cells uh, and the cellular metadata are available, but for such uh, analysis, uh, also individual analysis method has been proposed. And there is no common framework to deal with such complex data sets. And here I will introduce a mathematical framework called Tensor. Uh, which can be considered as a candidate of a common framework. Okay, so I will introduce the tensor and tensor decomposition. So what, what is tensor? Uh, briefly speaking, tensor can be considered as a generalization of data representation. For example, uh, a scalar value uh, is uh, tensor. Uh, this is called zeroth order tensor. A vector is, is also a tensor. Uh, this is called first order tensor. A matrix is of course tensor. Uh, this is called second order tensor. If a data has three modes, uh, I mean height, width, and depth, uh, this is called third order tensor. That's why any data is basically a tensor, but uh, in most cases, the term tensor uh, implies third order or higher order tensor. We can explain the tensor structure in many ways. For example, uh, in tidy data, uh, the ascending order can be explained by the number of the current. In the network, uh, third order tensor can be explained uh, with uh, different colored edges. In ER diagram, the third order tensor can be explained with entities with multiple edges. In tensor network, uh, which is a special way to explain a tensor, uh, the order is explained by the uh, number of edges, and the edges are also uh, called tensor leg. How a biological data become a tensor? Uh, the first way to generate tensor is stratification. By considering the differences in temporal space and uh, experimental conditions uh, samples, the order of uh, tensor increases. Uh, this is the simplest process to generate tensor data. Uh, however, in most cases, biological data is expensive, so such 
Uh, such rich data is typically generated from large scale projects such as ENCODE or GTEx. The second way to generate tensor data is uh, outer product. For example, uh, if we have two matrices, and the first matrix, matrix is mRNA times patients, and the second matrix is miRNA times patients, uh, many uh, dimensional redu reduction methods such as CCA uh, or SINMF uh, can be applied. And the two matrices are simultaneously decomposed to the lower dimensions. Likewise, uh, we can perform tensor decomposition against these matrices and calculating out a product, the third order about patients can be generated. And using a tensor decomposition algorithm, we can interpret uh, these depth vectors. Tensor is very useful. The advantages are that we can preserve the resolution of data and interpret uh, each mode. We can flexibly represent heterogeneous biological data as well. A possible disadvantages are scalability and lack of ready to use software, and I will describe these later. Uh, next, uh, I will introduce the tensor decomposition algorithms. At first, I will explain the matrix decomposition. Uh, which is a special case of tensor decomposition. Uh, let's say we have a uh, matrix n, n times m, and this matrix have some blocks uh, having the elements uh, containing the bigger or smaller values. In matrix decomposition algorithm, uh, this matrix is approximated by a small number or patterns uh, such as X1, X2, and X3. Each pattern can be represented by the, by the outer product of the two vectors. The first row vector has larger or smaller values, and these are originated from this blue row. Likewise, the first column vector has larger or smaller values, and these are originated from this uh, blue block as well. We can normalize these vectors. After normalization, a scalar values can be extracted from these uh, vectors. Uh, after studying these scalar values uh, in the diagonal elements of this small matrix lambda, uh, we can formalize this uh, decomposition as the uh, product as a, uh, of three matrices, uh, U lambda V, uh, V transpose. Uh, matrix V has three current vectors here, and each vector can be considered as a stepwise pattern and can be used for visualization or as a cellwise analysis like cell clustering. Likewise, the matrix U has three low vectors and each vector can be considered as a gene-wise pattern. The small diagonal matrix lambda can be considered the magnitude of each pattern. Since the tensor decomposition is the extension of the matrix decomposition. Uh, let's consider it in the same way. If we have a third order tensor, uh, I mean gene times tissue times uh, condition, uh, using tensor decomposition, uh, we can extract a small number of patterns. Uh, each vector can be summarized to the multiple matrices, and these are called factor matrices. The scalar values uh, are summarized to a small tensor, and this is called core tensor. And there are two types of tensor decomposition algorithms, CP decomposition and 
Hacker decomposition. In CP decomposition, the core tensor is assumed to be diagonal, which means we have to set the number of row dimensions of all directions are the same. Uh, so uh, J1 uh, equals J2 equals uh, J3. And also the relationship of vectors of different factor matrices are one to one. On the other hand, in Taka decomposition, the core tensor is assumed to be uh, dense, uh, which means J1, uh, J2, and J3 uh, can be a different number and the vectors of different factor matrices are many to many. Also, CP and Taka are both well-studied algorithms. There are many different ways to decompose tensor, such as Dedicon, uh, Induskal, Inuskand, Ichitaka, tensor train, and tensor ring decomposition. Now, I will introduce an uh, application of tensor decomposition. Here, I show the Tiffany map of 1.3 million mouse brain SDRNSEC data here. Uh, in this map, uh, the cells are mapped uh, in lower dimensional space and colored by different cell types. Many single cell studies have been detected cell cell interaction. Uh, between uh, cell types uh, on the basis of uh, ligand receptor gene co-expression. Ligand and receptor gene expression uh, can be extracted as low vectors from SC RNSEC data. So we first calculate the outer product with these vectors. Uh, by the outer product, the order of a vector increases and become a matrix. matrix. This matrix can be considered uh, as a similarity matrix uh, with all possible combination uh, between the cell types. We can apply the, the outer product to many uh, ligand receptor pairs. So pile, pile up matrices become a three order tensor uh, in my study, I named this CCI tensor. Then uh, I performed a tensor decomposition algorithm, uh, non-negative Taka decomposition uh, against uh, CCI tensor. By this decomposition, uh, we can see the representative triadic relationships in the CCI tensor. Uh, that is, uh, we can see the correspondence between ligand expressing cell types, uh, receptor expressing cell types, and related uh, Edward pairs. This is a use case of SC tensor. I applied SC tensor to a germline data. Using SC tensor, we could extract the triadic relationship. Uh, as you can see in uh, figure A. Uh, in figure B, uh, upper row uh, means uh, ligand expressing cell types, and the bottom row means uh, receptor expressing cell types. Moreover, this figure shows uh, ligand genes tend to express in this uh, cluster but the related receptor genes have at least two types, like uh, this cross, uh, this pattern, and this pattern. C-tensor and Edward Base, uh, which is our ligand receptor pair database, have been published as our biology packages. The usage is very simple. Only we have to do is to perform uh, four functions, and cell cell setting, and cell cell ranks, and cell cell decomp, and cell cell report. The results can be viewed by the HTML report. Uh, I'm using a C-hex developed by Dr. Saskia Freitag, and this is very useful to interpret the results. We also uh, support uh, users' original database creation. 
if, if we have a corresponding table between ligand and receptor genes as a CSV file, we can convert the file to our original error base package. And this package can be used with an SC tensor together. Also, uh, we have provide, provided many uh, adult base packages for 134 organisms. Finally, uh, I will talk about future topics of tensor data analysis. If we want to use tensor decomposition, uh, we can use major methods uh, such as CP or TACA at present. But if we want to more specific algorithms or more sophisticated implementation, there are only a few ready to use software. This is because in most cases, novel tensor decomposition methods are implemented as MATLAB source codes or toolbox. And that's why we have to develop such methods by open source languages such as R, Python, or Julia. I'm developing some parts and providing other packages. And we also have to consider the heterogeneity of biological data. In particular, we sometimes want to decompose multiple tensors simultaneously while having them relate to each other. In a generalized coupled tensor decomposition algorithm, which is a kind of generalization of many decompositions, uh, any data can be decomposed in the same way. Uh, in this algorithm, any decomposition is generalized uh, with a matrix uh, called coupling matrix. And this is, this is a key of this generalization. This coupling matrix is a corresponding table between uh, these tensors and related factor matrices. Uh, using this matrix, any decomposition is formalized in the same way. And so in the near future, uh, we do not have to implement such complicated modeling from scratch anymore. This algorithm is not available right now, but uh, I'm developing this method as a I'll package GC tensor. And scalability is also one of the disadvantages of the tensor analysis. Uh, as the number of orders increases, the data size getting bigger. That's why we have to think about some techniques to tackle this problem. In our previous benchmark study about principal component analysis, we found that uh, out of core and sparseness are very effective for the scalability. So I will extend these techniques to tensor decomposition. So now uh, I am developing uh, out of core and sparse implementation of tensor called delayed tensor. Uh, in this package, a tensor data is stored in HDF, uh, HDF5 file and incrementally loaded in an uh, out of core manner uh, only when the data is needed. After data loading, uh, each loaded sub tensor is formatted as a sparse tensor. Uh, using this package, uh, we will be able to perform many tensors arithmetic rapidly. Okay, this is all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Koku, for your great presentation. And uh, any question in the chat box? Feel free to type in a question. Do you see any? Okay. If not, I'm going to have a very naive question. Um, so. What do you what do you think when the downstream analysis tool will consume your um, the results from an um, SC tensor or t uh, any you know tensor related decomposition tool? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, what SC tensor do is only uh, detect cell-cell interaction, 
So, uh, in, so inter it, it would be realization too, I can imagine that for realization, yeah. like that string clustering or something and anything else. And uh, after the downstream, uh, I uh, I'm doing uh, many enrichment analysis uh, like uh, uh, pathway analysis or gene ontology analysis. And uh, <coughs> yes, uh, we we can confirm the result. And such a function is implemented as a HTML. Report so we can uh, see the uh, result of enrichment analysis here. Okay. Thank you very much. Any question here? Okay, let me see. Okay, yes, that's question here. Can you see that? Um, tensor decomposition method is sensitive or insensitive to the data distribution, such as normality online. Um, yes, and sometimes we have to consider the distribution, a probabilistic distribution. And many, actually, many algorithms assume the normality, uh, but uh, we can change the distribution. Uh, for example, we can assume the person distribution or non-negative uh, binomial distribution. Uh, many uh, algorithms are uh, already available. <coughs> uh, uh, outliers are, ah, yes. Uh, sometimes outlier is uh, with, uh, very uh, problematic, so uh, some distribution like uh, uh, to, uh, for example, heavy tail distribution, like uh, uh, T, T distribution or Cauchy distribution uh, can be applied uh, to tensor decomposition. Yes. <laughs> There's another question here. The last question. Can you see that? Yeah, yes. Uh, how, eh? how can I contribute? How can I contribute to construct the tool? Uh, how? how? Uh, so, if, if you are uh, as a developer, please make your package. <laughs> Does he mean contribute uh, as a developer, or he means uh, uh, he means like uh, ah, GitHub? How to use your tool? I guess I don't know. Ah, yes. Uh, a uh, tool means uh, my tools. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, please uh, uh, do pre request uh, for my repository. Yes. Ah, uh, Tom Kelly and share the link of my. Uh, Link uh, GitHub repository. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Um.